Oof. Speak. Well, it all kind of started a few months back um, when I switched from my six core X79 platform towards a Skylake CPU with a Z170 platform as my workstation upgrade. Everybody flipped out. Everybody lost their shit. X99, they said, six core, they said, um, instead of this little dinky 6700K four core CPU, let's see if I made a big mistake. The Dark Base 900 may be the most innovative case of the year with a built-in Qi charger, interior lighting, tempered glass that can be installed on either side, and a fully modular interior that can be inverted if you so desire. Be quiet. Stepping up their game, check it out in the description below. What's up guys, I'm Dimitri with Hara Canucks and I've been so tempted to find out how much time I've been losing working on a four core uh, workstation PC versus a six core wor workstation PC for Adobe applications. The answer will surprise you as it did surprise me. And so the battle begins between the 6700K and a 6800K Skylake versus Broadwell E, four core, eight thread versus six core, 12 thread. Also look how tiny the size difference is a bit crazy. Now it is understood that an X99 platform is more suited for encoding work, for professional work, for creative work, anything that requires computational power because we have higher RAM capacity on the motherboard, we have more PCI lanes on those processors. And so my primary reason for switching to a Z170 platform from the X79 platform was because I wanted to utilize the Intel 750 SSD, uh, which is the PCI ESSD as my boot drive, which was not possible on the X79. So I've just kind of stuck with it and it has been working great for me. And so now I get to finally reveal to you if it's all been worth it or I should have gone with an X99 from the very beginning. In order to make the comparison even, I am using the same 64 gig gigabyte RAM kit from G-Skill at 3200 megahertz, a GTX 1080 Founders Edition, and the same Kraken X61 cooler, and a whole lot of patience for four days of testing. So aside from testing stock to stock speeds between the two processors, my 6700K easily achieves 4.5 gigahertz at 1.24 volts, while I didn't get so lucky with the big guy that could only reach 4.2 gigahertz at 1.4 volts. And starting with some generic understanding of the system performance, we have 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra with a six core machine performing 4% faster. In Cinebench R15, the 6800 delivers a 34% better score, both at stock and overclock, and a 24% boost in OpenGL test, most likely due to higher cache. So clearly more threads account for faster computation and that's exactly what we see in this collection with H.264 compression, image editing, heavy multitasking and OpenCL tests with the six core pulling ahead with a 28% boost for video compression and 15% increase uh, for heavy multitasking while only six and 4% for image editing and OpenCL respectively. And now my favorite part, real render tests in Adobe CC with real projects that we've published, Adobe Premiere first. So here I used my most recent edit, the GTX 1060 versus RX 480, and I have color adjustment layers applied with lumetri effects that are GPU accelerated. This is very important because you can see both the CPU and the GPU being utilized while encoding. But I wanted to make sure that the GPU accelerated effects were not bottlenecking my render. So here are encoding times with and without lumetri effects. This is very important again, which gives you only a four second difference on my 60 second uh, project, which is not significant and therefore I left all my GPU accelerated effects in my testing. And so are you guys ready to see the mothership of this entire video? Here we go. So I exported a one, three and a seven minute timeline with both CPUs at stock and overclock. And the six core machine at stock speeds finished 7% faster on the longest timeline than the Skylake CPU while only 8% faster when comparing overclock to overclock between these two processors. It's also very interesting to see how my 6700K at 4.5 gigahertz finished 3% faster compared to the six score at stock speeds. 
Then getting into After Effects, I tested a camera track feature that analyzes the footage for tracking reference points onto which you can place tracking text and do all kinds of stuff. And then Warp Stabilizer that analyzes the frames and smooths everything out. So here on my 11 second file, regardless of clock speeds, the 6700K completed the analysis 15% faster than the six core machine. Very unusual result. I'm happy to see that, uh, you know, the four core machine with faster clock speeds performed better in After Effects for these particular tests versus a more core, slower clock speeds. And finally, getting into some gaming, there isn't that much of a big difference here. The six core showed incremental performance improvement in CPU heavy titles, up to six extra frames per second on average on an overclocked 6800K in Battlefield 4. And so the takeaway based on this testing is that the 6700K is an impressive low chip. I almost took it for granted there for a while thinking, man, I should have gone with the six core, but uh, with my overclock of 4.4 gigahertz, I am um, out competing in encoding times compared to a 6800K at stock speeds that goes, goes up to 3.8 gigahertz. However, if you can overclock the six core chip to past 4.2 gigahertz, then you're lucky, uh, then it will give you a marginal, you know, 7% increase in 4K encoding compared to my overclocked four core machine. But when you take into account pricing for each system, an X99 platform would be significantly more expensive than a Z170 platform. And you have to just take into account uh, and see if you will benefit for higher maximum memory capacity. So like an X99 can support up to 256 gigabytes versus Z170 only 64 gigabytes. You have to consider uh, more PCI lanes on the CPU itself if you're doing multi-GPU and stuff like that. But all these benefits will come at certain cost, obviously, if you're future proofing. However, I am sticking with my Skylake 6700K for now because Adobe loves clock speeds, and that's a fact. Any last words? So, yeah, those are my findings. I'm very surprised at my findings, to be honest. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. That's it, you're done. Can I go now? <laughs>